Hi, this is Andy Skerber with Crownworks, and today I want to talk a little bit about gratitude and how that practice can be the anecdote for upper limits problems, anxiety, insomnia, and all kinds of things. So gratitude. Ah, gratitude is probably my most prized practice. Um, it's also, I think, for many people, the weakest muscle. You know, we've talked a little bit already about asking and about receiving and some of the challenges that are there and some of the stuff that comes up. And in my opinion, I think gratitude is the cure for all of that. So to get a little woo-woo on you for a minute, um, I believe most definitely that what we focus on expands. And whether you've read or watched The Secret or subscribed to any other kind of law of attraction practices, um, most will tell you the same thing. And that is that what you focus on expands. It doesn't have to be more complicated than that. You can attach any dogma you want to it. Uh, but gratitude as a core part of your daily practice is integral to overcoming some of the challenges both around asking and receiving and just about having a really happy full life. About six years ago now, I lost my father very suddenly. And after that, I started to experience um, some pretty severe anxiety attacks. And I went on and off several different medications to try to find a solution for it. Um, I was also suffering from insomnia during that time. And I was seeing an amazing therapist who I was really torn about whether or not I wanted to take any kind of prescription help, you know. Yet I was having a horrible time falling asleep and also um, having really terrible nightmares. So this amazing woman that I had been seeing suggested to me that as a bedtime ritual, I go through and list gratitudes. And I tell you, it was a profound and life-changing experience for me. What I found was the trick was to back off of the experience at hand to something that I could find that I had no resistance around, right? It was really hard for me to look at the situation and go, oh, I'm grateful for my father's death because whatever, my siblings and I are, are closer now. Like that didn't feel genuine to me. And we know that gratitude, like genuine heart-centered gratitude, is the easiest vibration for the universe to match. When we think about law of attraction, we don't always want to deal with the personal culpability that comes with that. You know, a lot of times we'll say something like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm doing my, I don't want traffic mantra driving to work, right? Like, I don't want traffic. There's no traffic. There's no traffic. But here's the catch. Universe doesn't hear no. They just hear traffic. And so as you're saying no traffic, no traffic, no traffic, you're actually calling in more traffic. And um, a wiser or more careful or more purposeful choice might be to say instead, I'm asking for a smooth, easy ride. I'm asking for a smooth, easy ride. And in that, in that remembering, in that like getting into your body and feeling what it's like to have ease, then that is how you're gonna attract more of that to you. But sometimes that's hard, right? As I'm bumper to bumper in the 405, I'm having a hard time physically remembering, getting into my body sensation of what it feels like to have ease. And so that's when some teachers of mine have encouraged me to really back way, way off of it, right? Like where is the something that you can be grateful for that gives you that kind of body sensation that doesn't have any resistance around it? You know, when is the last time you felt ease? Just to stay in this traffic conversation, right? When's the last time you felt ease? And I might think, oh, it was this morning when I realized that I got to hit snooze again. That felt amazing and relaxing and like an exhale and, oh, this is going to be easy, right? My morning is going to be slow and gentle and time isn't of consequence. And in that feeling, right, in, in, in that space, going in to ask for my drive to be easy, for my drive to feel like this does. And that's kind of the trick, right? Like practicing gratitude is a whole art form. 
And so having something that you want, maybe it's a lover, maybe you are really ready to be in relationship and you're calling in your perfect mate. But if you're saying the same sort of thing to spirit or universe or, or whomever you see fit, um, that, oh, you know, why aren't they here? Why aren't they here? It's sort of like being in the car again and saying no traffic, no traffic, no traffic. All that the universe hears, the only frequency you're offering to be matched is the why aren't they here? They're not here yet. And that requires a lot of responsibility, I think, to really look at what, like, what am I really putting out there? And so the practice of gratitude or the practice of expressing gratitudes don't have to be about some grandiose thing, right? I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I have hair, even though I'm having a bad hair day and I'm in braids, you know? I'm grateful, I'm grateful for pink lipstick that lifts my mood. I'm grateful for that song that comes on the radio and no matter how many times I hear it, it always like makes me wanna dance. And in those things that there's no other resistance around, right? There's no part of you that really doesn't like pink lipstick or really doesn't like that song. It's just an uninterrupted gratitude, an uninterrupted joy. And so that was the thing that was tricky for me to learn as I started my nighttime gratitude practice was not to try to get into some grandiose idea, some reckoning around, you know, how I was grateful for my father's death, but to be grateful for my pillow that was always so soft and to be grateful for my cat who knew how to snuggle right up to me and to be grateful for my bedroom windows that always let the light in at just the right time. And as I noticed, as I started to do this practice, I was falling asleep more easily. And with those thoughts, those thoughts of having no resistance attached to them, were what I was sort of drifting off to, I found my dreams became better. And that was a huge, a huge game changer for me. Um, and also, I didn't have to take any medication, which was great. Recently, I have a friend who has shared with me his practice of three gratitudes immediately in the morning. And it's the same kind of idea, right? We are setting the vibrational tone for how we're gonna receive the rest of the day. So when he wakes up, immediately the first thing he tries to think of are three things that he's grateful for, right? Maybe one day it's the snooze button for him. He's grateful that there's coffee in the machine ready to go. Um, just little things like that. And I know this may sound sort of trite, but these are the things when you are faced with an issue, if this has become more of an automatic practice, and most definitely beginning and ending your day with a gratitude practice is an incredible way to profoundly change your experience of life. Because that's the truth, you know, the way that we relate to whatever issue it is, is, is really the only issue. So if we can change the tone in which we're experiencing things, suddenly it's not so scary to ask for what we want. It doesn't feel like we have to block ourselves in receiving it. Um, and we're not addicted to the approval that we need in, in some specific outcome. I think another way that it shows up quite commonly is in us looking for our partner. And so we have this idea of how amazing things are gonna be when they show up, when they show up, but they're not here yet, so when they show up. So I think that that's another amazing opportunity for like a bedtime ritual to really practice the gratitude as you're falling asleep of what it feels like to come home to that person, right? What their face looks like when you walk in at the end of the day. What kind of meals do you have together? What activities are you doing together? It's interesting, you know, the mind doesn't know the difference between a well thought out fantasy and reality. And so actually by visualizing our, our future perfect gratitudes, we're training our body to raise that emotional thermostat for a higher threshold of happiness which is an amazing tool that doesn't cost us anything and we can do almost anytime, anywhere. And so it's pretty incredible that something as simple as being thankful for something that you don't even have yet 
could really be the key to receiving it. And to bring this back to the hairdressing world, if we haven't really thought about what it feels like to have that full clientele, then we wind up thwarting ourselves with an upper limit problem and suddenly, even though we're as busy as we've always wanted to be, we're walking around in the back going, oh, I'm so busy, this isn't fun, I'm so tired, I don't like this person, my feet hurt. Um, rather than having those default gratitudes to fall back on. A lot of times we're not able to receive what we've been asking for because we don't recognize it when it shows up. We haven't spent enough time practicing the gratitude so that when that feeling shows up for us, it has a home. We recognize it as our own. And this is why a gratitude practice and recognizing that space within us that is uninterrupted, is not resistant, there's no pushback on how good that feels, is such a powerful exercise. And it doesn't have to be about having your lover arrive or having the full clientele of your dreams or having your dream apartment. It may be the practice of just recognizing what feels good inside you without interruption. Maybe it's your grandmother's peanut butter cookies. Maybe it's, you know, watching your favorite TV show. Maybe it's hitting the snooze button. But what brings you joy without interruption? That is a gratitude. That is the thing that we want to spend more time in. And when we hone that space and grow and expand that space inside of us, so that when something else, whether it's a lover or an apartment shows up, we go, oh yes, you know, our hearts themselves actually open up and go, oh yes, you belong here. I recognize the way you feel, you belong to me. And there's no pushback about it. And then there is no upper limit problem about it. It's just yours. One of the things that's really helpful for me in practicing my gratitude is seeing the word places so that I remember to do it. Um, for a little while I had it written on my bathroom mirror in a lip liner. Um, and even now as I record this video, I'm looking across the room at a candle. So this is my gratitude candle. This one is from House of Intuition. And if you, if you wanna get extra woo-woo, they have blessed candles um, with stones in them and essential oils that really invoke that feeling and help to dissolve some of the resistances that we have around gratitude. So this is a big one. I have a little votive holder on my station at work that I light every single day that um, just has the word gratitude on it and a reminder that every experience I have is for me. Some other ways that I like to practice my gratitudes might be in journaling. I have recently embarked on the Artist Way journey. Um, that is a book and journal companion set. It's a 12-week program. I highly recommend it. Um, but part of that practice is doing three morning pages every day and just filling three pages with whatever's on my mind. And I have found without fail the mornings that I start listing gratitudes or doing maybe what um, I learned in, in my schooling to call an ideal scene or a living vision of a future perfect situation. Maybe it's my partner showing up. Maybe it's my dream house. Um, but living in that world lets me recognize things throughout the day as they show up because I've spent some time dwelling in that place of what it's going to feel like to receive it. So journaling is a great tool to develop your gratitude practice. Um, also just having reminders posted around whether it's a post-it note or a little lipstick note to yourself in the bathroom mirror um, on your laptop maybe on your bedside table, you know, a simple question on a post-it note that says, what was I grateful for today? And remember to make those gratitudes not something that's contingent on anyone else and also has no point of resistance around it. This isn't just woo-woo power of positive thought. And listen, there are some days that there's not going to be a lot that you were grateful for. In my opinion, those days are the most important to find one thing, even if it's, if it's that song, even if it's your favorite cookie, even if it's that there was, you know, one more beer left in the back of the fridge. Whatever it was that day that brought you joy with no resistance, even if that it was your, your day was over and you got to go home, 
if that brought you joy, if your seat warmers in your car brought you joy, whatever it was, that, more of that. And I promise that that frequency is the easiest for the universe to match. So as for me, I am grateful for this space. I'm grateful for these continued conversations. I'd also be extra grateful if you decided to subscribe or follow me on Instagram at crown underscore works, hashtag crown works. Till next time, I'm grateful for you. See you around.